I can't believe it's finally here. A single player only Star Wars game with zero microtransactions. Was this game really produced by EA? That same publisher that claimed single player games were dead and that loot boxes were actually surprise mechanics? Well, it appears so. And all I can say is it's about damn time. Not only is this game one of the best games I've played this year, but it also just might have reignited my love for Star Wars. It's no secret that the Star Wars IP has had a pretty rough time for a while. The recent films by Disney have led to the fan base being split in half. And under EA, the last six years of Star Wars games have been nothing short of an embarrassment for the entire industry. I mean, EA has had six years to make Star Wars games, which should be a money printing machine. And until now, all we've had are two Battlefront games, each which had their own set of controversies, and a huge list of amazing sounding games that have all been canceled by EA. Nevertheless, it appears allowing the acclaimed Apex Legends and Titanfall developer Respawn to make their own single player Star Wars game may have been one of the best decisions ever made. And if this is the kind of quality games you can expect from EA moving forward, then they just may have a chance of proving themselves worthy of making games in this fantastic and incredible universe. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order feels like a perfect mix of Uncharted, Dark Souls, and everything nice to create something truly special. There isn't a lot of innovation here, as almost every mechanic and element has been borrowed from better games, but their combination here actually works in harmony. You've got the platforming and set pieces of Uncharted, the puzzle solving and tomb exploration of Zelda, the gameplay and world design of Dark Souls, all with the looks and sounds of Star Wars. It's easy to tell every second while you're playing that Respawn really did put a lot of love and passion into making this game. And while I may have been skeptical about this game before release, I couldn't be happier with the final product. However, it's still not flawless, and does suffer from some pretty big technical issues on the Xbox One. A couple dips in the writing and story, and maybe a little too much inspiration from Dark Souls. Although admittedly, it is pretty funny that Obi-Wan's high ground advice does actually fit pretty well with how to deal with tough enemies. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! ...on him then, so when you drop, make sure you spam square. So to properly find out, while this game may be one of EA's best games yet, despite a couple of hiccups along the way, we need to go in depth into each core element of this game, including the visuals, the audio, the gameplay, and the story. As always, there's timestamps in the description below, but let's hurry up and get started with the first aspect that many will take notice of, the visuals. Fallen Order is an absolutely gorgeous game. Well, at least for the most part. This game's environmental detail from the rain and water soaked shipyard all the way to the sun baked planet of Dathomir, or the jungles and forests of Kashyyyk, all look amazing. And I'm glad EA let Respawn use Unreal Engine 4 over the publisher's own in house Frostbite engine. While this game may not look quite as good as Battlefront 2 in some cases, it's still a great looking game. And there were several moments during my playtime that I stopped and took in all the detail. There was a lot of love and care put into crafting each of these semi open worlds. And while they may be filled with obvious visual cues of vines for climbing and surfaces for wall running, it doesn't detract from the fact that everything looks and feels like Star Wars. Although some of the enemies and overall look of Dathmir really does feel like a location that's heavily inspired from Shadow of War. Alongside the environments all looking great, the vehicles and armored enemies also look visually stunning. Fighting the Empire has never looked better, and thanks to a great sense of scale in this game, climbing AT-ATs looks and feels amazing and really ups the immersion factor. Sadly though, while the environments, vehicles, and human enemies look great, the Wookiees, well they're an abomination, and the faces in this game downright look terrible at times. One key factor in making in-game human models look believable is perfecting the eyes, and after just recently playing Death Stranding and God of War, where the facial animations and models seem near flawless, it was weird seeing how bad the faces look here, and how scary and unnatural the eyes look. People have pointed out the faces and eyes have looked bad ever since the first gameplay reveal, and I'm sorry to say, but they haven't improved much since then. And I know it's not the fault of the engine, as Gears 5 has great facial animations, and that is also on the same iteration of Unreal Engine 4. But overall this doesn't affect the game too much, and it was never bad enough to detract from the overall experience. And it's hard to get too mad when this game has such a great rendition of the iconic lightsaber, that's not only extremely customizable, but also sounds incredible. The audio design of this game is just as good as you'd expect from a modern day Star Wars game. While DICE's Battlefront games may not be fan favorites, one factor every person agreed on was that the sound design was best in class, and that remains the same with Fallen Order. Everything from the sound of blasters, monsters, stormtroopers, and of course the lightsaber sound just like they did in the movies. Sadly though, once again while the audio design is overall impeccable, just like the visuals, there's one aspect that it falters on. 
And while it may not bother everyone, or even most people, it was enough to grab my attention. For me, an important part of a game's audio is of course the music. And while there are a couple of great themes and pieces from the game, such as the intro music, Overall, the soundtrack is just serviceable at best. Yes, it still sounds like Star Wars, and there are a number of pieces that are clearly designed to sound like our favorite nostalgic tracks in the films, and the music usually fits very well with what's happening on screen. But there was never a single song that made me pause the game and try and search it online. Hence why you've been hearing music from other games in the background, alongside the fact that Star Wars music is also heavily copyrighted. Again, this probably won't bother a lot of people, but after the Mandalorian's stellar music, I did expect a similar music caliber here, especially when it has such an astonishing gameplay stature. Fallen Order has been called a Star Wars Dark Souls game by many, and while it may sound cliche to say it plays a lot like Dark Souls, it's simply the truth. Well, at least in the beginning. Now, I expected Fallen Order to have some inspiration from Dark Souls, but instead, this game is heavily influenced from Dark Souls. And if you would have told me that From Software made Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, I would have believed you. The game's combat involves carefully parrying, blocking, dodging, and attacking. There's a wide variety of attacks to use, and as you advance through the game, your abilities, both for aggressive and defensive play, dramatically expand. You also have to watch your force meter for all actions other than the basic swing, and even use stim packs from BD1 when your health gets low, as your health doesn't regenerate. You can only regenerate your health and stims when you find meditation zones in the open world. And just like the Souls games again, meditating to refill your health also respawns all enemies in the world. This can be a very tricky decision at times, as some of these enemies are extremely hard to kill. Then as you defeat these threats and foes, you'll earn XP that eventually transforms into skill points. Unless of course you die, and in that case you lose all of your XP towards your next skill point, and have to recover it by striking the enemy that killed you last. If you do manage to stay alive for a while though, then those skill points may use to acquire abilities and upgrades in three different categories, involving Force, Lightsaber, and Survival. Unlocking these upgrades and using them against your enemies as you play the game is great, and you really do feel like you get a lot more powerful throughout the game, as you're able to adapt and survive a wide variety of combat scenarios. I also respect Respawn for putting in four difficulties to choose from, and while I can usually beat any shooter game on the highest difficulty, this game is an entirely different beast. At first I attempted this game on the highest difficulty, and almost considered stopping for a while as I was miserable. But after lowering it and seeing the natural progression of your abilities as you play the game, I really have grown to love this game's combat, and have become incredibly addicted to it. However, I do think this style of gameplay will at least in some regard limit the game's potential audience. Yes, all Dark Souls and Sekiro fans will love this game, and you'll have plenty of Star Wars fans like myself who aren't the best at the type of gameplay, but love the world enough to put in the time to overcome the challenges. But I really do think a large portion of people aren't going to enjoy the combat, or might even feel like it's a little too tedious. After all, Star Wars is loved by a lot of younger fans, and I don't know that many kids who play games like Dark Souls. Some boss fights are incredibly challenging, and some encounters where a ton of enemies are all thrown at you at once, and each enemy type requires a different attack to kill, can go from exciting to just frustrating. This is because not only will players have to think about the order in which to kill enemies and the methods to use, but it also requires an extreme exercise and patience, as some enemies also have their own stamina bars and loads of health, which is another issue all on its own. You really do feel that weight and force of a lightsaber when you're eventually slashing and slicing into weaker foes, or when blocking and reflecting blaster shots, but then as soon as you reach those bigger bosses, and you've gotten 10 or 15 hits into a weak spot, and they still have half their life, you feel less like you're holding a lightsaber, and more like you're holding a nerf sword. So when you combine the lack of lightsaber immersion, alongside the lack of dismemberment, the combat while still very fun, does leave some to be desired. I didn't expect to be as OP as Starkiller in the Force Unleashed games, but I did expect a little more power than we got here, and I certainly expected a little more realistic saber physics. Looks like Jedi Academy still retains that title. Combat, though, is only one part of Fallen Order's gameplay loop. The second part is all about traversal and exploration. For the majority of the game, after you complete an incredible intro that was definitely inspired by Uncharted 2, you're able to use your ship and travel between five different semi-open world planets. 
Now these locations aren't as open as you'd expect in open world games like Skyrim or Fallout, as you'll have to unlock certain planets through story progression, and some planets will require you to backtrack as advanced skills unlock new pathways. While traversing and platforming may be a mixture of Assassin's Creed and Uncharted, it's actually quite enjoyable. Some reviewers have stated they didn't care for it much and found these worlds to be lazily crafted, but I appreciate the replay value of unlocking new areas, and the manner in which collectibles and environmental storytelling is handled here is brilliant. The routes are usually winding and difficult and do require some serious thinking at times, but once you've mastered your mobility and timing of force powers, you truly feel like a seasoned Jedi, and the feeling of figuring out the puzzles all on your own is a tremendous reward. Plus, finding and scanning collectibles or points of interest typically rewards a substantial amount of XP. So overall, after this combat and traversal was fun for me, and I'm sure it'll be a dream come true for Dark Souls fans, but it certainly won't be enjoyable for everyone. And the backtracking can get pretty insane at times, and can really deter the overall experience, which is a shame because the story was a fantastic ride. Now don't worry, just like my title promise, I won't be spoiling any of the story here, and I'll only say what the trailers have shown. So Fallen Order takes place after the events of Episode 3, and before the events of Episode 4, when almost all of the Jedi have been purged from Order 66, and the survivors have all been deemed as traitors to the galaxy and are actively being hunted. You play as a Jedi Padawan called Cal, who survived Order 66 and was living low profile for a while, until good old human compassion led to his identity being revealed. Now you must travel around the galaxy to a variety of locations, both new and old, and meet a wide range of friends and foes on your journey to unlocking your true destiny. The story has been claimed as predictable and being too safe by many, but for me, I enjoyed it, and it's exactly what I wanted from a Star Wars game. It's not trying to divide fans like Destiny's sequel trilogy, but instead wants to recapture some of that old childhood magic with a simpler plot and simpler themes. They don't let that fool you though, as this game has a lot of great lore for Star Wars enthusiasts, and while the themes may just be about trauma, dealing with guilt, and overcoming hardships, it's the same kind of beats I felt when watching the original trilogy, and for that, I couldn't be happier. Joining a return to form story is some great characters. I thought Cal was a decent protagonist, and I enjoyed Seer, but my favorites were definitely BD1, our lovable little droid who is full of surprises, and fully devoted to being Cal's best friend, and of course Grease, who not only has some great humor throughout the game, but hearing and seeing his interactions with Cal aboard the ship was stellar enough that it feels like he was plucked right out of the Mass Effect universe. The villains in this game are also serviceable, and their cutscenes definitely made them look terrifying. It was also nice to see the fan favorite Wookiees again, and some Rogue One personalities, and seeing what they did before the movie certainly was a treat. So while the story may be simple, and the characters may not all be as well crafted as old school Bioware games, I enjoyed my time throughout the story, and truly did care for the characters that Respawn had crafted. This was not a grand staple of innovation, but rather, a good rendition of a tried and true formula. In fact, that describes the overall game pretty well. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order doesn't innovate much and doesn't take many risk, but instead it masterfully combines acclaimed elements from other games and mixes them all together to create a wonderful product that has clearly been made with a lot of love, a lot of passion, and a real care for Star Wars. In a time where Star Wars is having a rough spot on screen by Disney and buried in video games by EA, the franchise desperately needed a victory on both ends. And with The Mandalorian sparking TV interest, and Fallen Order finally sparking video game interest, this franchise may finally be heading for a revival. While Fallen Order may push some consumers away due to an over-reliance on Dark Souls gameplay, retreading environments, some poorly designed UI elements, and a predictable story, those who push through will enjoy a gorgeous game that not only looks and sounds just like the Star Wars that so many love, but also enjoy a decent, if familiar and simple story that is sure to put a grin on many faces. EA's handling of the IP this far has been abysmal. And while they may have claimed that single player games are dead, their newest Star Wars game is not just the best Star Wars game yet, but even one of the best EA games ever made. This is a true single player only game, with no microtransactions, and one that will last from 20 to 40 hours. Which is why I can confidently give Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order a 9 out of 10. If this is the kind of quality products that we can expect from EA going forward, and they don't revert back to their old anti-consumer and greedy ways, then I fully support them making new Star Wars games, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Well that wraps up this review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and my personal take on the game. 
So let me know what you think of this video and the game down in the comments. And as always, my Twitter account and Patreon are linked down below. And this video is made in part thanks to the generous support from Shane Cruz. With that said, let's shut down the comments. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to leave a like, share the video, and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next Jeopardy Gaming video. Keyless Alive.